Dear friends, dear comrades, I'm honored that you allow me to say some words at the occasion of your Congress. May I start with giving my special greetings to your comrade and my good friend Alexis Tsipras, who is by far the best known, still living socialist in Europe. Take care, Alexis. And may I also give my greetings to your comrade and my good friend George Katrugas, who very recently has succeeded me as the chairperson of the group of the Unified European Left in the Parliamentary Assembly of the Council of Europe. Once again, George, congratulations. Me, myself, was elected president in the beginning of the year, president of the Parliamentary Assembly of Europe's oldest and broadest treaty organization based on three pillars, the rule of law, human rights and democracy. I was elected with an over two-thirds majority, which is not that bad for a leftist. But I do need this broad mandate as we are living, as you all know, in most challenging times. The COVID-19 crisis has costed the lives of far too many Europeans, especially the elderly. We have a lot of lessons to be learned why we could not protect so many of them against the dangers of this virus. And now we are challenged by a new enormous crisis after the Russian military invasion of our member state, Ukraine, which has cost until now the lives of thousands, has injured thousands and has forced millions to leave their homes to seek shelter somewhere else in Ukraine or across the borders in one of our 45 other member states, amongst which Greece. I know that you have a special relation with Ukraine. After the blatant violation of its international obligations, our Council of Europe decided to expel Russia from its membership of Europe's oldest treaty organization. I was sad that we had to do it. I'm glad that we did dare to do it because we had to make clear that membership of an international organization is not for free. If you cross red lines, you exclude yourself from international cooperation. Last week, I was in Ukraine at the invitation of the Speaker of the Parliament of Ukraine, together with George Katrugalis and the four other leaders of political groups in the Parliamentary Assembly. There, I offered condolences uh, and at the same time, I promised on behalf of the Council of Europe that we would do anything to help Ukraine to restore its territorial integrity and its national sovereignty and to rebuild the country along the lines it committed itself to when becoming a member state of the Council of Europe. That means along the line of the respect for the rule of law, the respect of human rights and the respect of a pluralist democracy. This will be an enormous challenge for Ukraine and the people of Ukraine who are brave but will surely not be able to do it all by themselves. Therefore they need international solidarity, international solidarity of the rest of Europe. And therefore I also call on you, dear friends and comrades from Syriza, to give this international solidarity. I do believe that we can restore peace in Ukraine and that we can overcome this dark crisis which is now looming over Europe. Not by a dangerous new arms race, not by the complete militarization of our continent, but along the lines that were basic for the Council of Europe, that is the respect for international law. I wish you well during your Congress. Thanks again for allowing me to be here with you. I will come to Greece next month and then I will surely be with your leadership. Thanks again. Have a good Congress.